Diddling, din. No. <laughs> I was trying to do my own little <laughs> intro there. I was just thinking about an intro music. I genuinely thought I could just sing a little jingle. Not sing, but just like... I started to do the... Diddly, 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 diddly. Welcome to another episode of <laughs> Not Another Nutrition Podcast. Um, anyway... This episode, I hope you're well, lovely podcast people, this episode is to help many of the people who reach out to me or who have reached out to me over the last 6 to 12 months. I feel, I don't know why this is, I've been in this industry many, 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 many years. I have been contactable on social media for many, many, many years, but I have noticed a tangible increase in the number of women who have messaged me asking me about bulking. Bulking or muscle gain, you know, different, they all use, you know, different terms to mean roughly the same thing. And, um, but it's on this theme of gaining muscle. However, I have had Many women message me about muscle gain over the years, but it's different. And how it's different is <clears throat> previously when I've had, I mean, it's not a, a large percentage of women. I'm really thinking about saying women instead of females. Funny, I said that in another podcast. Please forgive me as my non-snowflake listeners if I do say females. It's... I think when you read lots of studies and it's like male and female participants, it just changes your vocabulary. Anyway, <clears throat> I think I might give up on the whole trying to be, <laughs> trying to say stuff in a specific way. But anyway, I'll, I'll at least not bother commenting on it so that you're not bored of me. The women that have been contacting me in the, pre in, in the last six to 12 months have been saying... I've been going through a weight loss journey. I've been trying to lose fat. I have been calorie counting. And I have got to a point where progress is so slow. Or here's the kicker. I have got to my weight goal. But I don't look the way I want to look. This is one of those huge issues with weight goals because they're so arbitrary. You know, there's the whole, your weight is not your worth. Great message. You know, lots of people need to actually get it into their head rather than just saying it. And, but saying it is good, sometimes speaking stuff out loud. But, you know, it, it, we can believe it and understand it, but it's not always, or it doesn't always penetrate into our being properly. Take some time. Anyway. They then say to me, so I think I need to gain some muscle to get the look I want. Now, they, these are all their own opinions and they're all, they are the masters of their own destiny and they get to choose what they want to do and not do. But this podcast is to give you some nutritional science and it's the same thing that I've been telling males, men, lads, for a long time now and it's to do with a calorie surplus it's to do with bulking it's to do with purposeful overeating in the pursuit of muscle gain and i guess it goes a bit against the status quo even the status quo of maybe some of the evidence-based industry who i you know fully respect and um i'm not at odds with them and when I say them it's no one in particular I just mean I'm not against people bulking uh, I see lots of value in it for a specific group of individuals and those individuals are the die hard trainers who want to gain the maximum amount of muscle possible and maybe want to step on stage but I'm going to add a Add another caveat. Don't know if caveat's the right word. I'm gonna add another. I'm gonna preface. No, 
man. I'm going to add another variable to the equation. And that variable is people who have a really good relationship with food and great control of their body composition pursuits. Guys who can get shredded and six packs and striated glutes, or not even necessarily striated glutes, just can get as lean as they want with, yes, a lot of effort, but without damaging their life completely uh, and without it becoming obsess a complete obsessive pursuit where where failure becomes a a high a high chance of failure becomes a real reality and what i'm getting at here is lots of these women have been messaging me saying i'm not i don't I haven't got to where i want to get and I can't really get any leaner because everything is just becoming a real struggle and weight loss is stalled to a minimum or, you know, whatever. Or maybe they have been losing weight. There, there is a, a continuum of these women and their different goals and their different levels of progress, etc. But the common question I'm getting is, how much of a calorie surplus shall I go in for my bulk, for my muscle gain phase? So and I read 500 calories here. So-and-so said 300 calories. So-and-so said 250 calories. Um, I saw you say in a comment something about 50 calories. That was about me. And well, I actually didn't think about this, but you know, doing the maths, doing the maths of these scenarios, doing the maths of what is a realistic amount of muscle gain. Lots of people, you know, you'll get people going, you know, can you gain muscle in a calorie deficit? No, you can't. You can't build a house without bricks or, you know, or something to that words to those effects. It's not true. We know categorically you can, you know, if you want to use your analogy, Science has shown you can build a house without bricks. You, if you don't think you can, you need to go back to builder's school. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's a bit like, oh no, we used plyboard instead or whatever. I mean, I'm going too far with this analogy. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But what I'm saying is we know you can. I'm not saying it's optimal. I'm not saying you should. We know you can, so stop using analogies that make it sound like it's impossible because it's not. Your analogy doesn't work. So <clears throat> there's a few things. So I've got this quote. I haven't posted it anywhere, but I often say it in MNU settings, case studies, residentials, etc. But it's essentially that fat loss is an energy dependent process. To achieve fat loss, you really need to worry about energy and energy in, energy out, etc. The flux of energy in and out of your system. Whereas muscle gain is a signaling dependent process. It doesn't depend, you you can't be, you can eat 10,000 excess calories and lose fat. It's dependent on a deficit of energy coming out of your fat cells. There needs to be a deficit of fat going in to out of your fat cells. That's unequivocal. I would love to see someone try to explain how that isn't the case. Uh, I'm sure there's someone out there a flat earther maybe who thinks that they could there is one guy out there who someone told me he used to be very intelligent but he started saying that actually you don't need calories or something it's all about he started talking about energy rays from the sun and i don't know if he mentions photosynthesis or it's more like harnessing light energy and actually that's what does stuff to our cells i don't know he's a madman and um, anyway but i think he's quite like he's in circles that discusses this stuff and it's like man why is anyone even just block and ignore it just needs out doesn't he 
amazing that these people sometimes get platforms to speak. Anyway, so muscle gain, signaling dependent process. So we know it can occur without an excess of calories. You can build muscle without an excess of calories. And essentially what will happen is, is if you are in a deficit, you'll lose body fat, but you and your body can use some of the energy that it requires to gain muscle from the masses, a massive amount of fat that you have stored in your body. And there's going to be different scenarios of if you have lots of fat, you can probably gain muscle more easily in a deficit. We know about different situations of um, coming back from injury, newbie trainers, um, people using performance enhancing drugs. Uh, I said injury, didn't I? Newbie trainers coming out from a period of off training. Yeah. So like, again, muscle memory, an amazing thing. Anyway. What I want, you know, I think I'm going to call this podcast something like women should never bulk. I'm probably going to call it that because it will make people listen to it because it's an absolute finite statement, which uh, we all know is not true. Women can do whatever the hell they want. But it's, you know, just to get it's this case for. I mean, lots of people sh probably shouldn't bulk in many instances in the belief, you know, I've had guys coming to me, you know, I've put on 20 pounds in this off season, you know, I'm going to be so much bigger on stage. And then they're like two pounds heavier on stage. And they're like, oh, I lost all of my muscle in my prep. It's like, you didn't. You just were fat and you then you lost that fat. You purposefully bulked and gained fat. And you had that fat nicely spread across your body. You know, some people are really lucky. They bulk up and then they just get these massive arms and big back and everything. And they think, geez, I've gained so much muscle. And they just don't. And, you know, they've still got some veins, visible veins and whatever. And they haven't just put it all on their belly, for instance, where we just look and can see and, and whatever. And then when they lose the fat evenly from their body, they get smaller and then they think, oh, you know, I've lost muscle. But they haven't. They just don't understand the realistic amount of muscle you can gain naturally. And, you, you know, you can do the maths for people who are not doing it naturally, but understanding what, the, what we're looking at here in terms of how much extra energy do you realistically need to gain muscle? Not a lot. And... And how much muscle are you realistically gaining? Not a lot. Not a lot to a lot. But if you're looking at, you know, a relatively excellent natural muscle gain in a year of, say, five pounds, again, not someone who's brand new to training, but five pounds a year, you know, someone trains for 10 years, that's 50 pounds of muscle. That doesn't happen um, <laughs> naturally. Uh, so you give someone 500 calories extra every day for a bulk and in a year, testing my maths, but we're looking at, uh, is it like 175,000 and a bit calories? I should probably work that out, but I think I'm roughly there. I'm just done. No, it's more, isn't it? Oh, no. No, I am about right. Yeah, 176, 177 thousand extra calories. Let's check. Alexa, what's 500 times 365? 500 times 365 is 182,500. Oh, I was a little bit off. Anyway, so that many extra calories and five pounds of muscle is is not going to cost us you know it's going to cost us probably less than ten thousand calories i mean in terms of tissue in terms of actual tissue energy it's going to be a lot less than that in terms of what it takes us to build that muscle we don't actually know the exact answers but if i can use ten thousand as a fairly agreeable amount of calories i mean what do you want me to use fifty thousand it's nowhere near that but we've still got this excess of you know one hundred thirty thousand calories which is a lot of body fat and this is the issue i'm trying to get across 
I mean, obviously, that would be 500 calorie surplus every day for a year. And the little pragmatic comment I'm going to make at this point is people get calorie counting wrong. And when you're bulking, sometimes rather than it being under-reporting, people may be slightly over-reporting. But the and the so the point being is you know I this pursuit of muscle gain to try and get the look you want, but by basically going backwards in your goals is what I want to discourage. I'm all for building in as many calories as you can to gain muscle whilst roughly maintaining your weight. It's the concept of reverse dieting, I guess. And it's, it, you know, I've, I've been asked so many times to do a podcast on reverse dieting. Um, but people don't tend to send me specific questions. I was thinking of doing a post to say, write all of the things you've heard about reverse dieting that you maybe think are too good to be true. Write what are all the things that you think are myths. Tell me the things that you've heard about reverse dieting that you want to know if they're correct. What are your questions re relating to reverse dieting? And then I'll do a podcast. Because just going out there and talking about a topic that is, again, not one that researchers in the real world really care about too much, or not a great deal of researchers, and therefore not a lot of funding is allocated that way, it leaves us with, you know, people making interpretations and giving opinions on things. And so I need to know what you guys are hearing to be able to answer your questions and give my interpretation or tell you where stuff is being completely made up, where it may be being said as fact. So back to this concept of bulking. I'm all for pushing your calories up from wherever you've been dieting. You may have dropped some metabolic rate through being in a deficit. We know that you go on a diet break, go back to maintenance calories, and 24-hour energy expenditure, total daily energy expenditure goes up. Great. We know that we can get some increase in thyroid output and some leptin increases and maybe testosterone goes up a little bit. Great. Back to, and then we can maybe build some calories in and our energy expenditure goes up. And this is the little bit of physiology and nutritional science I want to teach you today. Is when you overfeed people to varying degrees, i.e. there is great inter-individual difference in the outcome of overfeeding people. When you overfeed people to varying degrees, their metabolism increases. And their metabolism increases not through their basal metabolism, but through something that lots of you will have heard of, which is like non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT. And some of you will have heard about my differences in these terminal uh, creating uh, something that I would like more people to use, which is like NEAT and then NINAT. So NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, being walking steps, um, not planned exercise, but then it's difficult. Well, I planned this walk, so does that make it neat or is this actually exercise? And people start overly mentally mat masturbating about the concept. But this is the problem is walking around the, the shopping mall with heavy shopping bags all day for six hours. Sounds like strongman training to me but it's classed as neat. It's a really huge proportion of energy expenditure versus what we also call neat, which is fidgeting, tapping your toes, playing with your hair, um, you know, hand gestures, fiddling with your hands, postural control, movement in your face, etc. That also comes under this banner of neat, where I've tried to differentiate them. So I use this term NINAT, which is non-exercise, so not jogging or jogging, but non-activity, so not walking, not shopping bags. So non-exercise, non-activity thermogenesis. So it is the subconscious movement. Now there will obviously be a bit of a Venn diagram of where things cross over, but at least would help us explain a little bit more about 
areas that we can try and control, how much they contribute to our upregulation or downregulation of energy expenditure. And lots of what happens when we increase energy intake, we purposefully overfeed, is we increase, you know, NEAT and lots of it being subconscious movement. Our bodies become more wasteful. We know that we have lots of energy and that's great. But people are different. And it seems that there are two things which lots and lots of you are not going to like. Thing one. If you are female, the small amount of evidence we have in this area seems to show that you will not upregulate metabolism, you will not expend as much energy and you will gain more weight than a male counterpart if you are female. It's not a good thing, <laughs> unfortunately. Evolutionary biology would give us some insights into why that might be the case. Part two, the older you are, potentially the less you will upregulate metabolism in response to overfeeding. And I, you know, there's really limited data in this area. I, the, the overfeeding data does fascinate me. It's something I've read for a long, long time. Uh, there's certain studies on these tribal um rituals which is essentially like a coming of age thing and it's like you overeat i think it's the wulu tribe i haven't read it for many many years wulu tribe hmm, that doesn't ring a bell when i say it out loud but it's something that begins with w maybe i'll link you to one of these ceremonial overfeeding things it's it is so cool the <laughs> what they do anyway and um but there's other research, you know, overfeeding different macronutrients. If you overeat fat versus carbohydrate or sucrose versus fructose or whatever, and, and the differences this has. <clears throat> but it does seem that if you are older and female, if you overfeed calories, and the, this is one of the reasons that I've chosen to do this podcast is because I'm getting lots of messages from females who are between 35 and 50 saying that they want to bulk and go into a calorie surplus because they can't lose the weight and look the way they want and I'm saying to them don't do it and the message I'm trying to give them is something approximately like train for muscle gain eat for fat loss and if they don't want to lose fat providing the caveat of go back to maintenance, push your calories, but don't push your body weight up. Don't push your calories up. Don't start trying to calculate some fancy surplus to gain muscle. Feed yourself appropriately. Stop eating less. Stop restricting your eating. Push your calories to maintenance. Start to live. Start to enjoy your training. Start to not be hungry. Start to get greater dietary variety simply through the fact that you can eat more calories now but don't bulk because you're going to gain body fat that is just then going to take you further away from your goal a small amount of fat gain fine no worries the, i often teach coaches to coach this in terms of coach that some increase in body weight might happen initially just through increase in intestinal weight of food Increase glycogen stores in these in these overfeeding studies they'll often clarify like you know within the first day of this overfeeding there's like four hundred you know point four of a kilo a pound of weight gain simply through lean body mass inside the muscle from a hundred grams of carbohydrate and three hundred grams of water but don't go on this bulking strategy to get the the lean look oh i want my delts to look like this i want this line in my legs i want whatever I, i'm not you know I, I really hope that my listeners realize when i say those things i'm down with people wanting those things i if you want those things amazing cool i've got my own personal physique goals you've got yours amazing i'm not one of these people who you must hate yourself because you want a delt that looks like that Oh, can you hear that? 
some lorry beeping outside. Um, but what I'm saying is don't go on a bulk to try and get a leaner looking deltoid. Train for muscle gain, eat for fat loss or body composition maintenance, give or take. Um, and you know what I'll do, for, you know, in all my episodes now, you can go onto the website. So th this will be episode, goodness, 28, is it? You'll have to look on the podcast title that you're listening to. But if you go to martin-mcdonald.com forward slash EP28, so that's EP for episode, <laughs> EP28, it will take you to the show notes page of this where you'll have all the time points of it. But it'll have links to all of the resources I discuss. And what I'll do is I'll chuck in, I'll chuck in if you want to read about that reference for that ceremonial overfeeding. I'll have to find it. I'll, I'll, I'll chuck in a study on... Um, I don't want to use the word middle age, but I sort of feel like that's what they use in the study. But middle age females overeating, and these studies they'll say like increase calorie intake by fifty percent. So you know, eating two thousand five hundred calories a day, in, you know, eat an extra twelve hundred and fifty calories a day. Let's see what happens. Uh, or the, very often it's a thousand calories of overfeeding. One particular study I can I can't remember the author, um, but I know it's from like two thousand, like nineteen ninety nine, two thousand ish time, and it was like a thousand extra calories per day, and for eight weeks, and interestingly, the changes in metabolism in that study were mind blowing. Sarah and I spoke about this study, and we just. And literally, remember, we're walking to Home Bargains. I was walking along, just going, it's insane. And actually, you know what? This, it, I remember when we were discussing it, I said something like, I, it, the whole personal responsibility thing. Responsibility. You know, people going, in this study, there are people force-feeding themselves an extra 1,000 calories a day for eight weeks, right? And some of their metabolisms increased to the order of 700 calories a day. How unfair is that scenario? And these are, these are the people we observe, the young males. You know, quote, nat naturally lean, quote, unquote, uh, or quote, unquote, naturally lean males, young males who can eat whatever they want and not seemingly gain any weight. And this is, you know, it, it's a much, much, I mean, I shouldn't have really opened this can of worms because I wanted this to be a pretty succinct podcast. But this idea of, you know, you're overweight because you've just eaten badly. But yet you look at your younger brother or your friend, you know, you know that guy you know, who just eats rubbish all the time. And just doesn't put on any weight. We all know them. It's not, it's an easily identifiable phenomenon within society. Ev no one denies those people exist. And I'm not saying, you know, I really dislike, and again, this was some of the discussion I had with Sarah, is I really dislike the people who have a good point, who ruin it by saying dumb stuff. Don't be dumb gimps, you BMI haters. Body weight and BMI have nothing to do with health and blah, blah, blah. Rubbish. They do, it doesn't have no correlation. It's just a stupid thing to only look at and look at on an individual level. There's so much more we can look at. But just saying stuff that just makes you a, the laughing stock of anyone who can read any data doesn't help the purpose. Of, te of people understanding that obesity is a disease. It meets the criteria for a disease. And the idea that body weight is purely a factor of grit and determination, that is absolute, complete and utter rubbish. And anyone who says it's the case is either after money or is an idiot or is just saying what people want to hear. It's not true. But you can't go, there's no personal responsibility because that's stupid. Because genetics are not your destiny. Genetics load the gun, but your behavior and your environment and all these other things 
pull the trigger. And your starting point, we all start on this. This is why I spent my whole world tour of 29, tending thousands and thousands of people. And I, it just came up more and more and more that just explaining, it's like, we're all on a different continuum. We all have a start point. And this is why I talk about owning your own set of cards. Don't compare yourself to someone else because their set of cards is totally different. Hand of cards, I should probably be saying. And it's it's these, you know, you know, be a lion, compare yourself today, and you know, your only competitor is yourself. Like, yeah, good messages. <laughs> I don't know why I put lion into that. It's just motivational quotes, isn't it? It's always got a lion or a shark. Do you think a shark wakes up? <laughs> um so this is the problem. I shouldn't have opened this can of worms fully. But people are different. And then you throw in the gut stuff, right? The gut stuff is what we're learning about more and more and more. We know that your gut microbiota changes as you change your body weight. And we know that p different people have different ratios of different bacteria in their guts. And that might, and you know, I don't know if you're aware, but people are starting to do fecal transplants. Transplants? Transplants. Sounds funny, doesn't it? Anyway. Yeah, kind of gross thinking, right? But it's it changes the the organism. You know, it's done in animals first. I, I'm fairly sure they've done some stuff. I think they've even got these capsules now with feces in them that that, that they've been used. I mean, that's a bit gross. Let's not go there. Uh, but it's just understanding something to do with your genetics, something to do with the signalling is going on something insulin downstream from insulin leptin the effect it has on the brain we know that leptin impacts appetite and energy expenditure and all this kind of stuff but overfeeding affects different people differently so if you both don't give a crap and you both overeat 500 calories or a thousand calories your body subconsciously makes you do different things to a different person now Everyone here overeating a thousand calories gained weight, but m hugely varying degrees. So that someone, their phenotype, what they look like to someone on the street looks very different. And someone is going to get stigmatized for the way they look and someone isn't. Yet they're doing the exact same thing. But don't say there's no personal responsibility and it's absolute rubbish and blah, blah, blah. Because you can't get rid of personal responsibility. Everyone has to take some responsibility for themselves. But there are also different reasons that people end up overeating. And some of it is not just you due to laziness, but some of it is. So stop saying that it's just, oh, you can't say that. Some of it is due to that. And some people know it themselves. And then they go, do you know what? I want to st I want to start being my best self. There's a, a stoic quote or something. When are you going to ask the best of yourself? So it is in there. Anyway, God, this has gone way off topic. What a pain. What a pain. This could have been a second podcast. My point of this whole podcast is, is I'll link you to a couple of overfeeding studies. If you're female and you're middle-aged, sorry for the term. If it offends anyone, I don't know if it's an offensive term. Who knows? When's middle age? When are you going to die? Could be tomorrow. Who knows? Then you don't have as much leeway with overeating. So don't do it. Eat around maintenance train well enjoy your training gain some muscle and then you might want to consider because you might get some reset of metabolism you might and you might improve your relationship with food etc you might feel great fantastic i'm going to go into another fat loss phase oh look i'm getting more towards where i wanted to be and actually look i maybe i have gained a little bit of muscle on my delts or my glutes or wherever you were wanting it but don't bulk and and men males don't do crazy bulks either unless you really are understanding of what that's going to do. If you're a newbie to this, don't worry about adding weight every single week. Unless you really want to and unless you are really, really happy with the consequences of having to lose a lot of fat at the end. And being on a diet for longer. Understand that natural muscle gain is a painstakingly slow process. And therefore, it can add some fun to it, just getting big and strong and jacked and filling out T-shirts and finding T-shirts that are tight on your arms and your chest and not your belly or your lower back like me. <laughs> but anyway, I just want people to be informed so they can make their own choices. And I feel like lots of people who are doing kind of lots of online programs 
fat loss programs and they're struggling and they don't really know what's next and they haven't got the look they want when they get to the weight they are or their fat loss has gone so slow that they re- get told and again it's sort of you know some personal trainers or coaches are like oh yeah you know you probably just really need to focus on muscle gain now because they know that this person is really struggling they can't go any further and yet maybe that's a good message but when they start telling them you need to go in on a bulk and or go in a calorie surplus it's maybe not the case it's you need to stop dieting maybe and maybe adapt your training from something that you were doing a little bit more fat loss focused a little bit more you know maybe maybe you were just training for muscle gain and you just need to support the muscle gain with appropriate nutrition now have a long diet break have a bit of a reset period maybe do some sort of thing that looks like something that could be called reverse dieting right i'm gonna stop there i'll also add the research to martin-mcdonald.com forward slash ep28 if this is episode 28 which i think it is going to be ep28 um of another study on younger individuals again younger individuals and the females coming out lots worse than the male subjects Uh, i say worse i just mean not as lucky with regards to you know speeding up metabolism with extra energy intake Cool. I hope that's been enjoyable. I hope you've, hope you've learned a few things. I hope you enjoyed the little rant in the middle there. Got a little bit riled up, didn't I? I will try and record some more stuff on that. Um, as ever, I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying my podcast. 28-ish episodes in. Uh, trying to maintain some consistency for you. At some point, I'm going to post... Uh, or post or publish some interviews that I've done with other people onto my podcast so that you have those in one place and you can listen to them. And I'll probably, I'm not going to say that. Well, I was going to say I'll get them time pointed. I'm not sure if I will. Um, Who knows? Anyway, until next time, much love. And leave a review on iTunes. Thanks. Love you.